Greetings to all lovers of myths, legends, and folklore. Egypt is a land of secrets and mysteries, sphinxes and pyramids. Even from Greek, Egypt translates as mystery. Today, we will try to touch upon this mystery together. Starting from this video, we will delve into the world of Egyptian mythology and peer into the dark depths where the sun god Ra floats on the sacred waters of the underground Nile from the west to the east, where twelve magical gates await every newcomer, followed by the judgment of the immortals with the scales of the winged goddess Ma'at of truth. But let's start with another goddess, namely Bast, or, as she is also called, Bastet. It is no secret that cats were treated specially in ancient Egypt, and perhaps this is precisely related to Bast, who was considered the patroness of cats. In many encyclopedias, you can find information about Bastet. She is the goddess of joy and festivity. Her constant attribute is the sistrum, a musical instrument. Her sacred animal is the cat, and the center of her cult is Bubastis. She was depicted as a woman with a cat's head. However, it is not so straightforward, as Bass was not always like this. It took a long time before she became soft and fluffy. The image of Bastet dates back to ancient times, and her cult arose when no one in Egypt had heard of domestic cats yet. In those distant times, Bast had a lion's head, not a cat's head, and she was a fierce protector of Lower Egypt. She was worshipped as the daughter or, according to other sources, the wife of the god Ra, and helped him in the battles with Apophis, the enormous serpent. It was also believed that Bast's protection extended to the world of the dead, because her name means the protector of the jar with ointments, which, by the way, played a crucial role in mummification. But this is only one version. According to another, Bast comes from the Nubian word Bessa, which means cat, and connects Bast with such a deity as Bess. Then Lower Egypt was conquered by Upper Egypt, and the image of Bast began to soften gradually as another lion-headed goddess, the warrior Sekhmet, from the lands of the victors, took her place. At that time, a myth appeared that Bast had two incarnations, a woman with a cat's head, good, and a lioness, aggressive. But most likely, her Bast and Sekhmet merged into a paired deity, which, in a calm appearance, is Bast, and, in a wrathful one, the fierce Sekhmet. Therefore, in the images on the reliefs, it is very difficult to give an unambiguous answer to the question, what deity is depicted there? For example, there is a myth that seems to be about Bastet, but in character, it is clearly Sekhmet. Perhaps this is just a legend from more ancient times. It tells the story of how Ra, angered by the behavior of people, decided to destroy all humanity and sent Bast to them. She turned into a ferocious lioness and staged a real bloody massacre. When half of the people on Earth were already dead, the remaining ones began to decide how to avoid a sad fate. Fighting Bast with force was pointless, as many had already died in battle with her. Therefore, people resorted to cunning. They spilled wine on the ground, which in color very much resembled blood. Bast, not noticing the trick, drank this wine, got drunk, and fell asleep. So, humanity, with the help of wine, staved itself from certain death. It would seem that after the conquest of Upper Egypt by Lower Egypt, the cult of Bast should have completely disappeared. But on the contrary, it softened, but gained even greater significance. And this was helped by the beginning of domestication of cats in Egypt. Thus, instead of a lion's head, Bast acquired a cat's head and built herself a whole army of fighters whose main and seemingly small role in human life was actually very significant. They fought against mice and rats, thus saving the harvest from pests 
and making the tables of the Egyptians richer. They also repeatedly protected their owners and their children from snakes. Surely this is why Bastet became revered by them as a goddess, protector of the home, fertility, family, and children. As I have already mentioned, the cult of Bast gained greater significance, even though it differed greatly from its original form. It acquired new attributes, such as four kittens that became one of its important symbols and were depicted at her feet. These kittens symbolized her fertility, patronage of children, mothers, and cats. Fertility was a universal concept in mythology, so not only crops were under Bast's protection, but also sexual power. Bast was mostly depicted in two poses, standing and sitting, but when she was depicted sitting, she was always in the form of a cat, without any other appearance. Moreover, if Bast was worshipped only in Lower Egypt before, now she became the rightful owner of the entire Egyptian land. All social classes respected and worshipped her, but it is worth separately mentioning cats who were the living embodiment of the goddess on earth. Therefore, their attitude toward cats was special. They were not just pets, but members of the family. I think for many people in the modern world, it is still the same. The death of a cat was a great sorrow for the family, and they were sent to the afterlife with all kinds of honors. For example, in the 1890s, a whole cemetery of cats was found near Bubastis, which was the center of the cult of Bastet. But what is surprising is not that, but how the Egyptians sent their pets to the afterlife. Several mummies were found in the cat cemetery, which differed greatly from the others. Firstly, they were mummified with particular care. Secondly, their sarcophagi were made of stone. And thirdly, they were sent to the afterlife not empty-handed, but with jewelry, amulets, and other quite expensive gifts. Since we are not far from Bubastis, it's probably worth telling about it. Let's start with the name. Bubastis is the Greek version of the city's name, which literally means the place of Bastet. The ancient Egyptians called it Per Bastet, which means House of Bastet. It was in this city where the festival of the goddess Bastet was held. The celebration was held throughout Egypt, with huge fairs and pilgrims sailing to Bebastus on the Nile, accompanied by the sounds of flutes and rattles. On this day, blessings were sought for domestic cats. It was in Bubastis where the festival was held, which amazed contemporaries with its scope. Just listen to what Herodotus wrote about it. When the Egyptians travel to the city of Bastus, they do the following. Women and men sail there together, and many of both sexes are on each boat. Some of the women have rattles in their hands, which they shake. Some of the men play flutes the entire way. The rest of the women and men sing and clap their hands. When they arrive at a city, some women continue to shake their rattles, as I said, while others call out to the women of that city and make fun of them. Some dance while others stand and lift their skirts. They do this in every river city. Finally, upon arrival in Bubastis, they celebrate with lavish sacrifices. They drink more grape wine at this festival than in the entire rest of the year. According to local residents, up to 700,000 people of both sexes gather here except for children. The Bast festival symbolized the appeasement of the goddess through temple rituals, when the aggressive goddess became a mother and, as it were, gained true femininity. But what elevated Bastet eventually destroyed her, of course, over time. Thus, first Egypt was conquered by Alexander the Great, but it didn't harm Bastet too much. The Greeks simply associated Bastet with their goddess of hunting, Artemis and called her Bast Aleluria, which means cat in Greek. By the way, there is a theory that it was during this time that Bast received her second T, which turned her into Bastet. This was done because under the influence of the Greek language, Bast started to become Bas, with the T at the end disappearing. After the Greek occupation came the Roman, 
then the Arab, and finally the cult of Bast was banned by imperial decree. And so the goddess Bastet, patroness of cats, ended her journey. However, sometimes I still feel that her powers remained in this world, and our pets probably know something about it. So maybe it's worth asking them.